Welcome to the Voice of the Victim podcast. I'm Rosie. And I'm Ryan. And before we start today, I um, just want to take a brief moment to be serious before we get into a more lighthearted episode. I want to address the update we did on the Lauren Kavanaugh case. We had heard from some of our listeners that I came across like I was being kind of hard on Lauren. And then there were other people that thought I wasn't being tough enough. All I can say is that none of my disappointment in that episode was directed towards Lauren at all because, I mean, she'd suffered such extreme abuse. My disappointment and rage was completely directed toward the cycle of abuse itself that led to another girl being victimized. I mean, we share a lot of sensitive stories and we're very well aware that these stories don't belong to us. And we just want to share the facts and be a voice for the people who have suffered. There are a lot of passions behind these stories because they're so traumatic and terrible and they affect people emotionally really deeply. So just know that we're trying to do our best um, to be balanced. And if we are coming off as being hard on a victim, that's absolutely not our intention. Mm -hmm. But that's the last serious thing we'll be saying in this episode because we are taking a break from abuse <laughs> and answering some questions people have sent in. Yes, we are. So <laughs> I've compiled these into a really janky list, and they're not in order, but I've numbered them in the order we're going to answer them in. So if we're ever stumbling, <laughs> that's probably why. First one comes in from Justin from Obscura. Are you ready? Yeah. Which bear is best? <laughs> That's a ridiculous question. <laughs> I already there have are an answer. S- two schools of thought. I have an answer. Oh, sorry. My favorite bear is the sun bear. <laughs> oh, I was doing the office thing. Oh, I was being really serious about it. Why do you like the sun bear? I like the sun bear because I've recently learned a lot about sun bears and then that branched off into bile bears aren't, and how sad it is. And then aren't sun bears like endangered? Yeah. And then I've been watching and following this app that rescues sun bears and bile bears and brings them to refuge centers and I'm super into it, so if you didn't know, Rosie is very much an animal activist at heart. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's the kind of person that would try to free all of the foxes. The fur farms, yeah. Yeah. Even though they wouldn't be better off if you did that. Right. Because they'd run out in the traffic and get hurt. Yeah, we can talk about that a lot more. That can be a whole lot of I'm sure I just offended somebody. Question number two. Spider monkeys or capuchins? (laughs) I don't know if I'm saying that right because I had to look that up, what a capuchin was. Mm -hmm. I hope I'm saying it right. Why do I always go into an episode not knowing how to pronounce stuff? It kind of looks like a spider monkey, except with less hair on their face. So which one do you like better, Ryan? Um, I guess I actually like the spider monkeys more, because they got hairy faces. Okay. They remind me of cats. I pick neither, because I'm terrified of monkeys, and the only exception is Eugene, the lemur that I sponsor at the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. Lemurs are primates. Yeah, but Eugene doesn't look like a monkey. He... Monkeys are kind of like your bat, like Ace Ventura, you know? Yeah. He loves animals, but he hates bats. I also love bats, but... Yeah, me too. They're... A lot of animals remind me of Zook, our black cat with no ears. Bats, otters, black bears. What are the other animals? Anyway, I see what you're saying, because this picture that I'm looking at right now of the spider monkey... He looks like an alien child, like in a creepy alien movie or something. Let's move on then. Okay, number three. What are your pregame rituals? So pregame, as in before we record, I think? Yeah, I think so. Well, today it was pour a glass of Lafroy scotch. Yeah, and I poured a glass of orange juice. That's not a glass. That's like a <laughs> gallon. gallon jug. <laughs> um, we don't really have a ritual. We both kind of do our own thing. Sometimes we have a drink, but then I always mess up more than I usually do when I read words. <laughs> yeah, same. So um, I guess uh, we, we just try to be fed and not crabby. Yeah, I usually don't have a drink while we're recording, but tonight I am because 
it's not as serious of an episode. But anyway, we don't have like a serious structure. We used to do it every Monday as soon as Rosie got home from work, but that's kind of now it's just whenever we can find time. Yeah. That leads us into our next question that's very related to this one. <laughs> what? What is your favorite breakfast cereal? Um, easy question. It's Captain Crunch, the original kind. Ooh. Hands down, wasn't even hard to decide. I mean, you pay the price with the shredded roof of your mouth afterwards, but I like Turtle Tracks second. Oh, turtle Tracks? That's a cereal? I thought so. I thought that was an ice cream. I ate it as cereal. Just kidding. There, there is. I mean, I think it's an Aldi's brand. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, for me, I don't think cereal is a breakfast food. I got to be honest. I'm sure I'm making a lot of people mad. Don't I like worry about meat, making people mad about breakfast. meat for breakfast. You had like, to pick a cereal. That's dumb. Okay, I like cereal at night. Okay, which cereal? Uh, I also like Cap'n Crunch with heavy no, no. whipping cream. You can't on it. take my cereal. Can you please just pick a different one? Okay, Fruity Pebbles, and um, I guess I can only pick one. I like Fruity Pebbles because it makes a weird film on the top of my mouth. So gross. I know. It's, it's a weird... I don't understand it either. So next question. This one's really dear Wait, to my Wait, let heart. me ask this one because <laughs> you're the one that has an answer. It's animal related too, so... Metal or plastic straws? I have recently gone strawless in my <laughs> fight to <laughs> serve or help... S- <laughs> strawless? <laughs> in my fight to help sea turtles because every time you use a straw that's not metal it will end up wait in a sea turtle what about the paper straws they give you at animal kingdom i hate those because it gets soggy true but metal straws all the way i know it's not as comfortable but just remember that you're saving a turtle wait what about hard plastic that's like no Number five. You know, like the one you reuse? You use hard plastic straws. That I keep and I rewash. Built into a cup? Yeah, those are fine because you rewash them and you use them. I'm talking about fast food straws. Yeah. Remember Happy Feet, the penguin guru that had the six pack plastic thing around his neck? I'm not very good at um, being green all the time, but I draw the line at straws. All right. Question six. Another question for Rosie. Um, Have we been saying who these questions are coming from? Well, no, not all of them. Uh, I wanted to, but then I forgot. This one's from Jordan. Jordan, uh, one of our patrons. Woohoo! Yeah. So the straw question was from Ben from Mysteries and Urban Legends. Thank you, Ben. And then the pregame rituals and breakfast cereals are from Kate from Ignorance Was Bliss podcast. And there was one more, Spider Monkeys or Capuchins, or it was also th- from Ben from Capuchin. Mysteries and Urban Legends. So, All right. <laughs> I try to start with the silliest questions first, and we're going to get more and more serious as it goes on. So, question six. This is from Ashley. Jordan, you mean? <laughs> you just blew her cover. Completely different people. What was the food truck Rosie wanted to do? She didn't mention it at the end of the last episode. Okay. So, yeah, last episode you said you were going to talk about the end and then we got distracted with cats. Well, this is another passion of mine. (laughs) I have a few, and I've thought a lot about this. I've had this idea for a couple of years, and if you steal my idea, I'll be very disappointed. This is it. The Naughty Spud. Okay, so it's a food truck with a little potato decal on the side. And she's got a little bow and some high heels and puffy, perked up lips. And she's like got one hand on the hip, one hand behind her head. (laughs) And it's a hot potato food truck. And every hot potato. Like baked potatoes, you mean? Oh, that's what I mean, yeah. Baked potato, hot potato, whatever. Each item, each potato has like a sultry, feisty, flirty name to it. (laughs) Do you have any examples to share? Um, Like... The cowgirl and the, <laughs> the striptease. What's that, that? That one would be like, I don't like know. Like stripped yet. down, like just a potato? Yeah, but like a little salt? teaser of 
sour cream or something. Oh. Uh, and um, very interesting. I have a lot. I just can't think of them all right now. You think about them, and maybe by the end of the episode, you'll remember. Anyways, it's just like a dream of mine. So, oh, like country girl. I don't know what that would be yet, but <laughs> just coming up with some. Like you're just saying, you said cowgirl and country girl. A city slicker. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I should have given you a heads up on this one. Like a really naughty one could be called the harlot. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just coming up with random stuff now. Nice. Okay, should we get into number seven? Yep. Okay. What got you into podcasting, and what's the first podcast you ever listened to? This is from Amber. No, it's not. It's from Chris. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> the names above the questions are the okay. ones that submit them. What got me into podcasting is Rosie. <laughs> And also just in the podcast in general, Rosie had been listening to Generation Y. Mm -hmm. Was that the first uh, yes. podcast you listened to too? Yes, it is. Nice. Because all I was interested in was true crime. <laughs> so that's why I punched it in the search bar. And uh, yeah, I think she was playing Generation Y. Like, which episode was it? I don't remember. <laughs> Like the Jameson family deaths or something? I have absolutely no idea. I was like, this is interesting. So that's what got us started just as listeners. But then the more we talked about the cases on Gen Y, the more interested we were. And then we also, Ryan got me thinking about maybe sharing my own story and starting a podcast about victim abuse. Mm -hmm. And then that one blissful night when we went to Acapulco for dinner. Yeah. We decided it was going to happen. So this leads in, into the next question from Amber. <laughs> what was the story that made you <laughs> want to start podcasting? Okay, well, I pretty much just said it. No, because the story that made us want to start podcasting is the Turpin family case. So mm. remember, we oh, were right. we went to tacos and we were talking about that. We were taco about it. Never mind. <laughs> Let's talk about it. But then we went to the dollar store. Oh, yeah. And you were going to make some floral mouse ears. Yeah, I went through a floral mouse ear stage. If you guys want to buy them, though, I do have a bag still. And we were trying to come up with... DM for more information. <laughs> a name for our podcast. Yes, I came up with a name. Remember? At the dollar store? Yeah. I don't even remember. No, I, I, I remember. just remember looking it up on Apple Podcasts to make sure it wasn't taken yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was exciting. And then it was a really snowy day, and that's when we made our first episode. Yeah. Ryan wrote out the outline, and I was hot gluing mouse ears together. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> wow. We really should have prepared these answers better. But you're getting her off the cuff. Completely unprepared responses. Number nine. Where's nine? From Getting Off Podcast. What draws you into a specific case to cover? What do you think, Rosie? Honestly, the way I find cases is by watching um, True Crime Daily on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Because Chris Hansen is amazing. And he always has good stuff. He always has interesting cases that I have never heard of before. Even though a lot of our cases you probably have heard of before, but some of them are not as popular. Yeah, it's hard to say what draws us in. It's usually just, for me, it's when I hear a story and it like hurts my heart to hear about it. So usually I'll, I'll look it up to see if there's any more information on it. Like if another podcast has already covered it, because usually if another podcast has covered it, we're less likely to cover it right away. Mm -hmm. um, so we try to find cases that aren't out there in the podcasting world yet. But some stories are just so important that I think mm -hmm. you know, we should cover them anyway. But. It's really, for me, a story that I think needs to be heard, and there's something that we can learn from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Number 10? 10. Ben 
from Mysteries and Urban Legends for the third question <laughs> of his. Are there any cases that left you messed up for a while and you regret doing? Well, I don't regret. <laughs> yeah, I do. I regret doing one case that someone asked us to do for them, but it turned into not such a great idea because they hadn't gotten the okay from the family and we ended up pulling the episode because the family was very much not okay with it. Yeah. That that was definitely a big old learning experience for us. Mm -hmm. Most of my regrets with the podcast come from just not knowing what I was doing in the first 10 or so episodes. Like, I wasn't as good at writing the outlines or just talking in general. Yeah. Yeah. I That's the only one I regret, and the only reason why I regret it is because the family was so upset. Yeah. Other than that, I don't regret doing any others, but the one that messed me up the most was probably Liam Fee. Oh, yeah. Because he, I think it's because he looked like, looks like my little brothers, and that made it kind of more personal for mm -hmm. me. And he was such a helpless toddler, like, it just, it made yeah. me, I had a lot of dreams about him, and I wanted to adopt him as my own. <clears throat> for me... The one that probably stuck out to me the most that messed me up was Jasmine Richardson. Oh. Because she was only 12 years old. And just the fact that it could go that far is really scary. Another one that I I don't regret covering it, but I regret how I put it together because it had a really slow 20 minutes was the um, Rucky case about the missing twins. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Like, I just droned on and on over police reports for the first 20 minutes, and it got really boring. But otherwise, I think some of the old cases we might cover again someday just to try to do them better. But I don't think I'd cover that case again because there's a new book about it, and the authors of the book know a lot more about it than we do. So, And uh, the authors have actually been on other podcasts that we listen to. So Kate from Ignorance is Bliss. We were on 10, right? I think we're on 11. Yeah. <laughs> what are your hard no's for cases that you won't cover? I can't really think of any. Um. Well, we only really cover cases that involve abuse. Right. So if it's just, we, we would never cover like a serial killer. I guess we would if there's more to the story of the victim or if the killer had been, had yeah. a past of abuse. We don't want to give the abuser... All the glory, or you know, we don't want to give them the show. We want to yeah, give the victims I, the show. I think that's pretty clear. If you listen to our show, we're more focused on the personal aspect of the victim and how it affected them in the at the time. And like I was just saying about the Jasmine Richardson case, I still think about how her dad must have felt when Jeremy told him that Jasmine wanted him to die. Yeah, just like in that moment, how destroyed you would be yeah mm -hmm. but we've covered so many cases it's hard to even fathom all of the different ones because they're all terrible i can't really think of any hard no's no i can't either unless they're just like so over popular <laughs> i don't want to say for sure we'd never cover a case but we should probably just move on from this question now mm-hmm Let's see. Number 12. Ooh, this is a good one. Cambo from True Crime Island. Describe your studio and the way you research and produce your podcast. I'll describe the studio. Okay. So we are, our studio is a tiny room in our house right off the living room. It's not that tiny. It's like 10 by 10, isn't it? It's all right. Um, our studio has been a lot of things. It's been... Uh, art studio, and it's been a music studio, and now it's kind of everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the cat box. And the cat area. So yeah, it gets the job done. We've got a lot of stuff crammed in here, but we also have a Bob Marley theme that's quite strong in here. Yeah. Whom i big fan of. Big, big fan. Oh yeah, Bob Marley. It's <laughs> the man. If you were wondering about equipment... At the moment, 
we're just going into <laughs> we have two dynamic microphones one's a sennheiser and one's a sure and we're going into a y splitter xlr that goes into a little 30 dollar pile usb interface and then we run into audacity to record and then right after we record i usually edit out all the crap that we need to cut out and then i run it through levelator to get all the levels even and then i drop that into fl studio which is what i use to produce music usually so i already have it and that has a really nice limiter and eq that i already know how to use so that's what i use for the final product to put all the music and stuff together so that's the production and then for research pretty much on my days off i sit down and mm -hmm. do the research i try to get an idea of the whole case first and then i'll write an outline of just subtitles of each section of the case kind of in the order that i want them to appear and then i'll take one section at a time and because i have adhd and if i don't make <laughs> a list like that and take small chunks i would never be able to put together a big outline so that's kind of my process anything else you have to say no <laughs> <laughs> rosie's a little uh eager to get to tacos i'm fine no i just i don't i don't i'm lazy all i do is take care of patreon stuff well you're reading the book for an upcoming case right now so mm -hmm. we're we're working on trying to implement and i <laughs> I don't know what else I do. You you are the charm of this podcast. Okay. <laughs> like I do some legwork, but if you weren't in this podcast, no one would want to listen to it. So, oh, thanks. Thank you. And you bring, I mean, the background of your story is yeah. really important. Thank you. Yeah, you, know, you. I mean, you kind of made me into who I am now. So, all right, stop the sap. I don't know what I'd do without it. Stop. <laughs> I'd say I should cut that out, but no, I don't want to edit anything. Um, let's see. Ooh, this next question comes from Kate from Ignorance is Bliss. You get to crash at any podcaster's house for a weekend, free of charge and free transportation. Choose wisely. So I would rather just stay home. <laughs> but... <laughs> If I really have to pick, I guess it'd be my fangirl pick, which would be Justin from Gen Y. But that's because I don't really listen to a lot of other podcasts, but I always listen to Justin's podcast because I like his style. So it'd be like, you just like, hey, man. You sound like the girl, the nerdy girl from Big Mouth right now, the way you're talking. I would just really like to just say hi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't. I don't know if I'd want to like hang out. Well, ugh, I'm not trying to be mean now. Well, okay, Rosie. I'm just anti -social. Rosie doesn't get much time to listen to podcasts. I work a job where I can listen to podcasts all I day. So don't. <laughs> I'm the one that is usually listening to podcasts all the time, and Rosie just doesn't have the time to do that. So for me. I mean, I think it would be fun to go crash at Kate's house, but I think it would also be cool <laughs> to go hang out with uh, Tyler and Beck from Minds of Madness because they just, they're like the sweetest people. They, they're they so helpful and just kind to all their fans and their group and stuff. So I think it would be really cool to hang out with them. That was a good question. It was hard. Yeah, it was very hard. But I also think it would be fun to hang out with Justin or, and Aaron. Oh, no, you, you didn't pick them, so forget well, it. Forget it. Okay. 14. <laughs> would you rather eat... This is also from Kate. Play-Doh or crayons? Would you rather eat Play-Doh or crayons? Easy question. Easy answer. Okay, why is it so easy? I've done it. I've eaten Play-Doh. And crayons? I've nibbled as a child. <laughs> And so what's your answer? Play-Doh, for sure. Hands down. Huh. I love the smell of Play-Doh. I love the texture. I make homemade Play-Doh. I don't eat the homemade Play-Doh, but it's fine. You can do it. Yeah. Crayons 
Tastes like rolled up waxy dirt. Yeah, for me, like on first thought, I was like, well, I feel like crayons would digest a little easier. But then, I mean, some people eat clay to help their stomach issues, like resetting their stomach biome, all the weird little bacteria in their gut and but stuff. Crayons aren't clay. I know, crayons are wax. I'm talking about Play Doh. Oh, sorry. Play Doh's clay. With a lot of other weird chemicals. Yeah. And then crayons are wax. Uh, I guess I'd rather eat Play-Doh, too. Mm-hmm. It smells better. Mm. It's good stuff. <laughs> Thanks good. for that weird question, Kate. <laughs> All right. This one comes from Jordan, who, as you said earlier, is our patron. Mm-hmm. What is your happy place? Oh, I've got a few. Let me guess. <laughs> Disney World. That's one of them. Um, There's nothing like being at Disney World with no children and just your friend. Having a pair of mouse ears on your head. What friend? You. Uh, Chomping on an ice cream cone with a balloon. And then you drop your ice cream cone and someone comes and gives you a new one. Yeah, that was amazing. The worker... Swept up my dropped cone and brought me to the front of the line. Got me a free new one. We've had a lot of good experiences at Disney World. Yes. That's only one of my happy places. My other happy place would be on a cruise ship hmm. or on an airplane going somewhere. Mm-hmm. Or on Just the, the airport ocean. waiting the, to get on the plane. I absolutely love airports. Yep. Cool. The zoo. <laughs> on some occasions, as long as I'm not feeling like they're trapped and I feel bad for them. <laughs> uh, my happy place is on the couch next to you. <laughs> Weak. <laughs> That's a joke. Um, <laughs> I really like being completely alone in my music studio with no time constraints so I can just work on stuff. That's kind of my my happy place personally, but... I mean, that gets old, and I also need to spend time with human beings so I don't turn into a weirdo. Yeah. What are you doing right now? I'm just uh, adjusting. Oh. So the cat can <laughs> lick my Looks like you're hand. searching for a signal or no, something. I'm not. I'm not. Okay. We Man, I sound kind of like a freak now. <laughs> Why? <laughs> like, my happy place is being alone. It's super lame, but it can be your happy place. I felt like you were going to say a lot of people drive through at Culver's. Or a lot something. of <laughs> <laughs> It's true. One of my happy places is the moment of eating delicious What about the Humane Society? You love to go to the Humane Society. Only when I can take someone home. Yeah. Like every time we go there and we don't adopt a cat, I like cry on the way home. One of my happy places is grandma's house. I love my grandma. <laughs> Should we move on to Lindsay's question? Yes. So she says, I would love to hear your love story, how you met and how long you've been together, when you got married, how you proposed, etc. And this also connects with the question your mom said in. <laughs> when and how did you meet? Mom, so. you should know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you take it away. Well, we met... Quite a while ago, I was pretty young. I think I was about 13. 2000... Oh, I don't remember. I'm not even going to think about it. Nine. No. Eight. 2008. We met on um, a stupid website called Multiply. That was before Facebook. Yeah. But we didn't just like meet each other randomly. We had friends who had friends that knew each other. Our friends knew each other. Mm-hmm. And when we did eventually meet, I was absolutely googly-eyed... Over his friend. <laughs> yeah, and I was into your friend, so, who was 18. some reason, your best friend was 18, even though you were... 13. 13, or 12, I can't remember. And your best friend was younger than you, because me and Ryan have about a three and a half year age gap, so we were very much not into each other in a romantic way for a long time. We were friends, though, but I just... Thought he was weird. <laughs> yeah, you must have been 13. I was super into his friend. I think I was 18. 
I don't remember. But as time passed, and after my abuse, and bada boom, bada bing, all that jazz, I, me and Ryan got really close, and we became really, really close friends. And then I told him that I liked him. Aww. And my mom was like, lock it down. <laughs> <laughs> she really liked Ryan. She really likes Ryan, too. So we just proceeded there. I was a young... I was 16 when we started dating, and you were 18, no, 19. And then... There was parental consent, just so everyone knows. <laughs> yes, my mom and my dad. Oops, although your mom didn't really like me very much, but... She still doesn't. It's for a different time. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ryan proposed to me when I was uh, 17, almost 18, on a pier, which was so sweet because I really, really love the water, and I love the river. Maybe for this episode, we'll post a picture from our yeah, engagement. Yeah, that's a great idea. It was really sweet. He just, I knew it was coming because we always were talking about getting married. And yes, he got married very young, but it's working out. Mm-hmm. He got married when I was 18, June 8th, 2013. And we got married at an old farmhouse. Um, there were teepees and there were cows and animals. And we got, our reception was in a barn. <laughs> it was just great. It's very cool. It was at a place called Gibbs Farm. So Yeah, with Benny the Ox. Yeah. Wow, well you pretty much covered that. Do you have anything to add to the story? Um Well when I first met Rosie, she was hanging out with an eighteen year old and I was like, Oh, she's cute and then I realized how old she was and then I was like, Oh <laughs> Yeah. No thanks. But, um, yeah, like she said, she started dating my best friend at the time, who, who was, was younger than yeah, me. Yeah, who was like 14, I was 13, so. Wow. And so, <laughs> then they had a pretty nasty breakup. As nasty as it can get when you're 13 and 14. When, when, okay, so, you got he left a bracelet on your dresser, and then like the next week I saw him holding hands with some, another girl at the movie theater. Yeah, it just busted my heart in two. Because I had given him a bracelet that said her heart on it. One of those jelly ones. Oh, yeah. He had my heart. <laughs> <laughs> and then he laid oh. it on my piggy bank and left. Aw. Uh, it's no, okay. He didn't say anything in person? Um, Text. I don't... Uh, it's okay. He's a loser now and I hate him. So. Yeah, dodge a bullet. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Do you think you would have ever no. had any interest in me if? Oh, that you're going a different way. No, I mean, like, do you think? I don't know. I'm just surprised that you ever liked me. I know it's a mystery. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, Ryan's a very nice, genuine person that attracted me to him. Same. That's well. That's kind of because I. I went through a lot of girlfriends in the year before we started dating. <laughs> yeah. And I had, like, a huge fear of marrying someone that was too much like people in my family because I didn't want to end up with someone that was, like, really scary. hmm Like, unstable and stuff. So we were friends for a long time, and... You were always a really loyal and genuine friend, and you were always there for me. Thanks. And I think we had a really strong friendship before we ever liked each other, mm-hmm. which really goes a long way. So We've and, been together for a total of almost seven years. Yeah, 2011 is when we started dating. That's eight years, <gasps> almost. We'll, we'll be married for six years in June. Whoa! So, yeah, we we dated for exactly two years. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which makes me 24. <laughs> That's and even cooler than 24. 25. <laughs> Ryan is 27. Yep. Wow, when did that happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> What's funny is a lot of people will be like, oh, shut up. Because yeah. we're relatively young in the true crime podcasting world Mm -hmm. man did that come across as me saying everyone else is old Mm -hmm. that's not what i meant no you did let's move on to 17 
baby oh, plans. Amber. Did we say the last one was from Lindsay? Yep. Okay. Amber. We already had one from an Amber, but this is from a different Amber. Baby plans. Where do y'all, where do you see y'all in 10 years? <laughs> nice attempt <laughs> with y'all. I know. Um, baby plans. Not, Not yet. seeing them. It's funny because our, our best friends just had a baby this week. Mm-hmm. They did. And, and he's really cute. Yeah. It's adorable. Yeah. I'm just, for me, I'm so scared to bring a kid into this world. Like Mm -hmm. there's, there's just so much to worry about. And I don't think either of us really want a kid that much at this moment. So, no, I, um, I actually just decided there's absolutely no way I'm having a kid once I've learned about the bile bears. What are the bile bears? They're bears in china i think that they get tapped for bile and the bile is used in teas and like remedies oh yeah and they, it's terrible i don't recommend looking it up on images like i did it <laughs> is just so upsetting it made me want to scream they and use them as a resource for bile yeah like there's a little what do they use it in and i'm gonna look it up it's chinese like herbal, well, not herbal. Oh, you already said teas. Yeah, remedies and stuff. I'm pretty sure that most of the fir- or the farms are in China. Huh. Is that what it says? Yep. Oh, it just made me sick. And mm-hmm. that's when I decided there's absolutely no way I'm having a baby because I have too many bile bears to save. It's interesting how culture can impact how you look at a situation. Well, and our podcast, I... I feel kind of guilty having my own baby. If we actually really decided we wanted a baby, we would want to adopt. That's yeah. what we've decided. Usually, unless we are watching a movie and then it's like your own baby. But Yeah, I think adoption for us, mm-hmm. we would probably rather adopt than have a kid. Because cause that kid's already stuck in this crappy world. And, I mean, they need a place to go yeah i would rather help a baby in need than bring another one in um let's do tell thanos not to worry about the overpopulation not a marvel (laughs) not a marvel slip let's do 18 which is tell us about your hobbies do you want to tell them about your hobbies first uh you go (laughs) okay well i love to read books and I love to be an animal activist. <laughs> I love paddle boarding in the summer. I love doing anything outside. I love hiking and swimming. Um, gardening is another thing I like to do. Pretty much anything that involves being barefoot. Did you say paddle boarding? Mm-hmm. Sorry, I'm like a mile away from the mic. Yeah. Rosie was so excited this last summer because she finally got a paddleboard. Yes. And then I was carrying it down a hill to a lake. And actually our friend Ashley, who had the question about the food truck, was there when I stepped in a hole and rolled my ankle and then went tumbling down a hill carrying the 40-pound paddleboard. Yeah, I should have just done it myself. (laughs) Yeah. I was just trying to be helpful. You were trying to be helpful, but I'm a little bit stronger than Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so is that it for your hobbies? No, I'm not done yet. Oh, sorry. I also <laughs> like to um, make travel plans. I absolutely love looking up flights online and then putting together itineraries for maybe can we do this types of trips. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you're in the wrong era. The era of the travel agent is long gone. Yep. And now I'm done. <laughs> oh, you're done. Oh, done with this question? Yeah. All right. Um, my hobbies include eating, <laughs> um, playing video games, and my favorite hobby is music um i started playing drums when i was three years old so that's how i kind of got into music because my dad 
played keyboard for his whole life. He actually started when he was five on accordion. Anyway, that's how I got into music. And so I started on drums, and then I played piano a little bit too because my dad did. And I started playing guitar in middle school. Mm -hmm. And I think once I graduated, got into cello nice. for a while until... I forgot about that, yeah. Until someone who will remain unnamed <laughs> borrowed my cello, and then it ended up broken. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> that was a cool cello, though. I wanted to confront said person about what they did. As soon as I me. bought it, it was actually a really small cello. It was, it's like a, it was a, the smallest size, like a one, four or whatever. I don't remember, but I spray painted it black and then I did like the, oh, yeah, that the was... Fallen logo, mm -hmm. the skate brand, except <laughs> in, with red paint. obviously goes great with cellos, the skateboard brand. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it looked cool. It did. No, it didn't. It I was really very did. into aesthetics back then. Mm -hmm. Um... Yeah. Oh, I forgot to add something. Oh, sure. I make my own journals and planners that are like every every year I make one about that year and that life. Oh yeah. Or, well, my life, not all life. And I had, it's like a like a bullet journal slash scrapbook slash lists slash photo album, and I take it everywhere I go. And I also have a pressed penny collection that I add to every now and then. It's very important yeah. to me. Everywhere we go, she's looking for press penny machines. And I have mason jars of shells from different places we go. Man, you just have a crap load of hobbies, don't you? <laughs> yes. Cool. All right. That's, those are our questions. But before Wait, we... you can't, Did oh. I finish my question? You oh. kind of cut me off. I'm sorry. I got really excited. Well, I think I got the point across. Oh, oh yeah. I'm sorry. And last year, I started playing ukulele. Oh, yeah. Ukulele. U ukulele. <laughs> Which has been fun. I think that pretty much sums it up. Not quite, though, because before we sum it up, me and my animal activist self... You realize animal activists actually do something? I donate. Oh, yeah, that's right. And okay. they go strawless. <laughs> I wanted to tell you guys about this super important rescue to me. It's um, from Minnesota, which is where we live. It is a fur farm, fur fox farm, fox fur farm rescue. And you can donate to it on saveafox.org or the GoFundMe page that's on saveafox.org. And it's, oh, I want to sponsor one of these foxes so bad. And it's really, you can find it on Instagram too. It's Mick Doolittles underscore animals. And she does amazing work. And she rescues foxes and minks. Something else too. Oh, she's got a coyote that she rescued. And she takes care of them. And you can adopt them if you go through a lot of interviewing. That's nice that she's picky. With she's very picky. Nice plug. Thanks. I'm just, it's so important to me that you guys... <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you were going to do that. I didn't either, but I felt it necessary because I really... She just got a batch of fresh rescues from the fur farm. Mm. And I feel like fur, it's so wrong. It is so wrong to wear fur these days. Yeah, with all the synthetic stuff. Yeah. But I absolutely hate you. If you wear fur. No, <laughs> I don't. I'm sorry. I don't hate anybody. Okay. Well, I strongly suggest you don't. And whatever money you do spend on fur, double it and give it to her. Okay. <laughs> um, Maybe someday in the future we'll do it, an episode about animal abuse. Maybe we could have her on the show. Maybe I could get an, an animal. Maybe you could get me a sponsorship for our anniversary. So? <laughs> um, I think we might do one of these types of episodes like every year. Like this is kind of the 2018 one. Maybe we'll do one next year. 2019. Like it kind of works nicely to do them on the holiday week because then we can kind of take the week off from research. Mm -hmm. If let us know if you guys en enjoyed listening to this dumb conversation we're having. If you hate it, 
Keep it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We got a little bit of hate. I'm still feeling the when? backlash. That bad review. Oh, that's right. The one that, like, this is the worst podcast I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah, the I, headline was like, stop. Do not listen. Yeah, they were like, <laughs> like oh. I could only listen to five minutes and I had to turn it off. And I was like, if you're reviewing a podcast that you've only heard five minutes of, then what are you doing? Anyway, I don't care. Like water off a duck's back. For you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. All right. Now we can wrap it up. No, I'm good. All right. I'm not quite sure how to end it because there's no, like, story here. Well, we could end it with Patreon. Oh, yeah. If you like this and if you like well, us. No, not if you like this. If you like our other episodes. Please consider being our Patreon patron. You will get a sticker, a magnet, possibly pod cards, possibly a letter from us, and possibly a mug. Yeah, most likely. You really did a went into a sales pitch mode there. Look at the tiers. See when was, which one fits your lifestyle and subscribe. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so <laughs> in case you didn't figure it out, we have a Patreon. But if you're listening to this episode, you probably have listened to most of our other episodes and you already knew that. <laughs> so um, <laughs> let's see. I think, oh, yeah. You can follow us on Instagram at VOVpodcast and Twitter at VOVpod. And then email us at VOVpodcast at gmail.com. Um, yeah. Do you have anything else to say, Rosie? Um, another hobby I have is um, selling stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, you just kind of started that today, didn't I you? I made or $140 yesterday, yesterday and today. <clears throat> so. That's pretty good. We have some junk to sell, so. Got to put it in our trip fund. <clears throat> mm-hmm. That's all. Anyway, <laughs> and we're really getting all the random facts out on this episode. Yep. Anything else to say? No, it's time for tacos. Do, do we want to talk about the cats? No, they're fine. Okay. Cool. So, well, thank you for listening. If you're still listening, thanks for hanging in there. Obviously you are, because you're hearing this. And thanks, everyone, for the questions. Yeah. We appreciate it. Couldn't have done it without you. No. Exactly. So, let's wrap it up. Bye! Thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>